Welcome you all to this video where I am going to highlight the very basic but exciting features of Google Cloud Platform. Google Cloud Platform, or GCP in short, is a cloud service provider that provides a large number of cloud services like computing, storage, data analytics, machine learning, networking, and so on. GCP also offers a huge number of APIs that can be integrated with any other cloud application. In this video, we will get to know the various features of the GCP console that provides user interface through which we can interact with its cloud services. If you are new to cloud computing or looking for an overview of GCP, then this getting started video is for you. Let's move on. The user interface you see right now is what we call the console of Google Cloud Platform. For this video and for the rest of the course, you need to have access to this console to interact with various cloud services of GCP. Let's talk about some GCP terminologies first that we will be widely using throughout the course. In this list, the first things first. Project. Project is used in GCP to organize cloud resources such as virtual machines, databases, storages and so on. We create projects to hold resources that are dedicated to a specific need or department or client. Projects can also be used to organize our billing, and billing reports per project will help us optimize, analyze, and forecast costs. Every single resource we provision or any settings or permissions we define must belong to a specific project. In the dashboard page of the console, you might see a panel called Project Info that describes some basic information about the project you're in, such as project name, project ID, and project number. Here, project name is a name, which is finance in this case, that we chose when we created this project. Also remember one thing, if we delete this project, we can't reuse the same project name in the future. We also have project ID, which is a unique identifier for the project and it's composed of the project name and a random number. On the other hand, project number is something that's automatically generated and assigned to this project. This name, ID and number are frequently used while dealing with GCP services, either from the console or through the command line interface. In a later video, I will talk about command line interface that can also be used to interact with GCP services, but this video is only about how console can be used in our day-to-day -day life to interact with GCP resources. If we click on the project name in the top left corner, then we will see a list of projects that are created within our GCP account. The right symbol in the left of the project indicates the project that we are currently in. Now let's talk about some core services of Google Cloud Platform. To see the available services in GCP, click on the icon located in the top left corner. This is the navigation menu through which we can move from one service to another. If we go through this menu, then we can see all the GCP services that are categorized into compute, storage, networking, tools, big data, and so on. For example, in the compute category, there is a service to provision virtual machines known as Compute Engine. Another service can be used to provision Kubernetes cluster known as Kubernetes Engine. In the storage category, we have services for storing files, we have services for databases, etc. Under the network category, there are network related services to create VPCs, load balancers, VPN connections, and so on. In this navigation menu, we can also see services from monitoring, logging, and debugging our cloud infrastructure. In the same way, we have services for big data, we have services for artificial intelligence. To know more about these services in detail, please go through the official documentation of Google Cloud Platform. Like services, GCP also provide a bunch of APIs that can be integrated with any other GCP projects and applications. We can see the list of APIs by hovering the mouse over API and services, then library. 
Like GCP services, these APIs are also categorized into many categories such as advertising, big data, networking, security, etc. Before using any of these APIs in any of our projects, make sure we enable that API first. For example, if we want to use Gmail API in our application, then we need to enable this API first before we start using it. We can also see the API usage details such as traffic levels, error rate, latency and so on from the API dashboard page. So far I was highlighting some key features of GCP and its console. Now let's talk about another nice feature of GCP which is Cloud Shell. Cloud Shell is an in-browser command line interface that allows us to enter commands to manage GCP resources within a project. This Cloud Shell will allow us to run all the shell commands without leaving the console. If Cloud Shell is not activated in your console, then activate the Cloud Shell by clicking on this button from the top right hand corner. The Cloud Shell will be launched within a few moments in the bottom of the console. Here we can execute any Unix based commands such as command to see the list of files within a directory, command to see the process running in the system, command to see the current working directory, command to launch Vim editor, to create and modify files and so on. This Cloud Shell is also pre-configured with a GCP command line tool known as gcloud. Like GCP, console, this gcloud command can be used to interact with any kind of GCP resources from the command line interface. For example, to see the list of active accounts, type gcloud auth list command. To see what projects exist in GCP account, type gcloud projects list command. There are many other usages of gcloud commands that will be discussed throughout the course. We can also install this gcloud command line tool in a local machine. In one of my next videos, I will illustrate the process of installing and configuring gcloud command line tool in the local machine so that we can execute this gcloud command to interact with GCP resources from our own machine instead of through the GCP console. So that's all, a high level overview of GCP console in a nutshell. In the following video, we shall deep dive into the world of cloud shell and gcloud.